What is going on there, citizens of the Reject Nation? I am about to do a first time watching for a movie that has been at the top of my list for months now. Just haven't found quite the right time to do it. Then I saw that they are doing an adaptation of, I think, a Broadway musical version. So I thought like, oh, now is the time to do some SEO game here <laughs> and finally watch a movie that has literally been the first title I see out of all these movies I haven't watched yet. And that is The Color Purple. I've heard good things about it. I've heard Whoopi Goldberg is great in it, despite whatever Twitter controversy she's always in. I've heard that uh, Oprah is also great in it. Steven Spielberg movie, um, but I've never seen a moving frame of it once in my life. Been for a ride. It's like two and a half hours long. Hope it's a good one. So ladies and gentlemen, if you could leave a like, I know you can. That'd be very much appreciated. Also, uh, subscribe and click that notification bell. We are covering so many movies on this channel. Happy to have you along the journey to become part of the Reject Nation. As always, full length reaction watch alongs where you sync up with your own copy of The Color Purple. I am watching this off of Max today uh is available for our super sexy rejects at our patreon page we cover a whole bunch of stuff exclusively over there as well with reaction highlights and watch alongs included let's get into the swing of things people what's Mackie dada <laughs> earth conditions and this time this weather Better not never tell nobody but God. it will kill your mama. Wait, what? Let's get rid of the baby. I got two children by my daddy. A baby boy called Adam. He took her while sleeping. And a baby girl called Olivia. That's my wife's name. I don't think he killed my little baby boy. I heard he sold it to a preacher and his wife. Just sold the baby? He come home with a girl from around the town called Gray. She be almost my age. But they can't marry now. My little sister, Nettie, has got a man always looking at her. Damn, young Danny Glover. He got three children, though. He seen Nettie in church and now every Sunday evening. Here come Mr. Damn, he be smiling. I'm so used to associating him from Lethal Weapon. She's the oldest anyhow. She ought to marry first. Yeah, that sucks. She ain't fresh, though. But I expect you know that. Ugh. She's spoiled. Twice. Oh. Let me see her again. Turn around. What you doing that for? Your sister's thinking about marriage. Man, this Danny Glover seems like a real creep. I don't cry. I live there thinking about Nettie. And then I think about that pretty woman in the picture. I know what he doing to me. He done to her. And maybe she like it. This is really disturbing. I'm surprised this is PG-13. Is this just about this woman surviving this very abusive lifestyle? Maybe it's my preconceived notion because I'm familiar with Schindler's List that I wasn't expecting this to have a bit of a Hollywood gloss to it. Feels less Ross Spielberg and more Robert Zemeckis, I think. What's the last time somebody come to here? Not since my did. I can't, it hurts her. <laughs> Jesus. Danny Glover's definitely the villain of this movie. Other than the general world. I'm gonna make me and my little girl a new dress. Can I hold her? We could like, yes. Now run away. Is she my baby? Her name Olivia. What's her name? Pauline. Well, but I call her Olivia. What? So definitely is Olivia. Unless it's just a massive coincidence. Just look at those eyes, for goodness sake. Only somebody old would have eyes like that. So I call her Olivia. Wow, this is really sad. Sally! I just couldn't keep him off me. Think I could stay here with you, huh? Can Nettie stay with us for a spell? No, oh, God. What happened with you and Pa? I just couldn't keep him off me. You gotta fight, Sally. You got to. All I know how to do is stay alive. So that's what she's gonna learn in this story. Can you read good enough? No, I can't sit down, do it. Then I'll just have to go to school for both of us. And we'll both learn real hard before he break us apart. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful shot, finding light in the darkness. Apples, apples, A-P-P-L-E-S, apples. S-E-G-G-S, -G -G -S, 
H A I R A R M O. Yes, Seely. You are nailing it. Yo, these two little girls are great. I gotta go to school. No, no, no. no. Oh my God. Damn, this shit is so horrifying. Oh my god. Oh, that is so mean. These little girls are like so good. Come on, girl, because I'm waiting for you. You cut me and I'll kill you. Man, just go right for the slice. Cut his throat and run. Man, his offspring must be terrible. I think Oliver plays as sort of like a taunting boyish bully. Sid, you don't help me get ready here. Yes, sir. Ain't that horse saddle yet? Yes, sir, boss. Yes, sir. Damn, nothing's really changed, huh? I just greased my slopping hogs. Ain't for no hair. The right side up, or the left side? The left side? The left. Jesus. She says she right, but she never right. She said only death could keep her from it. Maybe she dead. Oh, so she hasn't heard from her this entire time? This here, Sophia. Oh, Sophia, shit. Get her name, huh? Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. Okay. That's gonna get married. That's Oprah. I'm living with my sister and her husband, and they say I can live with them for the rest of my life if I want to. I don't need you. Hell yeah. Oh, I love her. Harpo, don't you move one step. Just don't make me wait too long, Harpo. Harpo. Harpo? Oh, Harpo. Harpo! I won't. I will. I will. I do. <laughs> you may now salute the bride. <laughs> well, I guess we don't have to worry about Harpo being like his dad. Unless this movie proves me way wrong. Why is this like children? I have to let them know who got the upper hand. Nothing can do it better than a good sound beat. Sophia thinks too much of herself. Needs to be taken down a peg or two. Oh, you're gonna get your ass kicked, Harpo. What I'm gonna do about Sophia? Oh, she just breaks my heart, man. <laughs> Damn. Beat her. Whoa. You told Harpo to beat me. It was that mule, Paul. Outside at Northfield, and the mule just went crazy. He started kicking. <laughs> oh my life, I had to fight. I ain't never thought I had to fight in my own house. And yeah. that's a hoof print. Did you remember the yeah. hoof print that, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> Sophia beat on Harpo. Then Harpo beat on Sophia. And then one day, Sophia, she just can't take it no more. Good. Good for her. Paul. Who that, Paul? The woman that should have been your mammy. Sugar Avery? The hell is going on? I need to see her eyes. Then my feet can let go of the spot they stuck in. You show is ugly. <laughs> Jeez. Everyone's so goddamn mean her. Father! In the, in the cooler on the shelf. Ain't warm enough. How you work this stove, huh? She didn't get to become a real adult, huh? I still ain't tough enough. This cruel, narcissistic prick. <laughs> Nicely done. Very good job. Baby, don't be that way. He's so scared of her. I told you I don't want nothing. 
I just stand back and I wait to see what the wall gonna look like. Who exactly is this shook person? Who are you? Silly man. You ain't well. <laughs> Mind your own goddamn business. I feel just fine. Just had to eat. Has she not left this room? <laughs> your pa love you. <laughs> My pa still love me. Except you don't know it. Some real fascinating subject matter in this. Nobody in the fields, that's for sure. He is so much taller than her. Just couldn't rest till you got her in your house, could you? Damn, so he really does play it like a little boy, huh? My own daddy won't even have nothing to do with her. Old Mr. Talking Trash about sure. Folks don't like nobody being too proud or too free. No list standing up. I love Shug Avery. You're all our children's got different daddies. All Shug Avery's children got the same daddy. I can vouch for that. You can that. vouch for nothing. Silly, you has my sympathy. Huh. Little bit of satisfaction. Every evening after he leave the field, he knocking down and piling things up. Sometimes his friend Swain come by to help. Is that Lawrence Fishburne? Hey, Harbo! Swain! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool you could build it. She just sees a lot of women that she wishes she could be like, huh? The song I'm about to sing is called Miss Seely's Blues. What? Because she scratches out my head when I was ailing. Oh, all eyes on her. I did not see this coming. <laughs> I hope you think that you're something too. Oh. It's really touching. A lot of sun's going down. Oh, but trust me, no low life's gonna run me. <laughs> Yes. Remember your name, no twister. Gonna steal your stuff away, ma. <laughs> we show sure ain't got a whole lot of time. So shake your shit. <laughs> Cause honey, the sug is feeling fine. This whole movie, no one's empowering her. <laughs> so nice. You're fucking humiliating this shit out of Albert, too, because everyone knows what's up. <laughs> I believe I want me some of this here. I want to introduce y'all to my friend, Henry Broad, next. That Albert guy is so pathetic. <laughs> I love her in this man. She is so good. <laughs> Papa, she best to leave you alone. This is my juke joint. You said this here our juke joint. Some woman get a man dance with his wife if he wants to. Now she left him. So they never officially filed for divorce. You're just a big old heifer. <laughs> like I say. Talking to the wrong woman like that. Fine with me. Oh, no. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Fireman ain't gonna get it. Somebody call the law. Oh, hell yeah. Only one developing a relationship with Sugar Avery.
You see, Miss Seely, you got such a beautiful smile. I do believe it's time for me to go. What? He beat me when you ain't here. Why he do that? He beat me for not being you. Oh, well, ain't that some truth? You still love him? I got what you call passion for him. Do you mind if Albert sleep with me? You like sleeping with him? <laughs> Just climb on top of me and do his business. Well, Miss Seeley, you sound like he going to the toilet on you. He does dump all his shit on her. Don't nobody love me? I love you. You think I's ugly? No, I don't. I think you're beautiful. Oh, shit. What's going on? Am I late to picking up on some cues here? I think I'm late to pick it up on some cues here. Just like so much pain even in her smile and now she's on the view always getting in trouble <sighs> Are you bad? is that her pa i couldn't sleep at night Jesus, man. Man, the men in this movie suck. I'm going to go with her. This is my only chance to break from Mr. Jail. What you doing? Damn, how does he always sneak up on her? Oh. On your way. <laughs> What's something you got to say, Miss Seeley? Oh, my God. I was going to miss you. <laughs> I was gonna miss you too, Miss Seeley. You good in Chicago, Chef? Jeez. Oh, look at that. That's the cutest blue thing face I ever saw. Can you give me some sugar? What else? Would you like to work for me? Be my maid? Hell no. What did you say? Hell no. What did she say? She said, hell no. What did you say to Miss Millie? I said, hell. <gasps> oh, hell no. No! After many years, they let Sophia out of jail just to put in the next. Wow. She ended up being Miss Millie maid after all. May have bought Miss Millie a new car, and she done asked Sophia to teach her how to drive it. Wow. How you today, Miss Millie? How are you, Mr. Hamilton? Nice Bye. to see you. I hope you folks have a nice Christmas this year. Well, thank you very much. Same to you. Well, thank you. Oh, but I must talk to some of the shopkeepers about it, but we could do one next year. Have you ever thought about going to Mars? Wow. So she's not as abusive, but she still seems insufferable. I'm gonna drive you home tomorrow. You hadn't seen your children in a while, have you? No, I ain't seen them in about eight years. My God. That there's your mama. Oh boy. Hi, my name is Emma. I'm very pleased to meet you. This can only let her have a day. Mama, why are you crying? Because 
because I don't know y'all no more. Oh. I can do it. I can put this thing in reverse and I can make it go the right way. Woman, stop driving. Jack will drive you home, Miss Millie. I can't ride in a car with some strange cud man. I'll ask my sister so doesn't squeeze in. I don't know her either. These adults. False sense of care. Bitch. Man, that is messed up. Oh, Miss Steelers, I've heard so much about you. Feels like we old friends. Is this her husband? It's my husband. Yikes. Mm -hmm. Come on, Miss Seeley, go upstairs with me. I think I gotta finish stuffing the turkey. Has her sister been writing this whole time? I've been writing to you over the years, but Albert said you'd never hear from me again, and since I never heard from you all this time, I guess he was right. Wow. Albert... Oh, you deserve to be castrated. One thing I want you to know. I love you. And I'm not dead. Man, it's been so many years. The lady you met in town is named Corrine. They could not have shillings. And then they say, God sent them Olivia. Oh. And Adam. Oh, uh, they say they stayed together, the, the children, huh? And now God has sent me to watch over them, to lavish all the love I feel for you on them. Wow. That is pretty crazy. I got my two children. And your sister. Her name's alive. I love her as much as you can probably know. Go find them letters. Oh, shit. She'd really be taking a stand right now. Wow, he really buried the shit out of this. Goddamn right. I wrote, I wrote a letter, letter to you almost, almost every day on this ship. On my first side of the Africa coast. Wow. Nettie seems like she led a much better life. Do you know what a jungle is? Trees. They are so big, they look like they were built. And vines and ferns and animals. Wow. She's really getting to use her imagination. Why can't Tashi come to school, she asked me. But the Alinka don't believe in educating girls. She said they're like white people at home who don't want black people to learn. Mm. After two months, all we hear is chopping and scraping and dragging. One of the boys in my afternoon class burst out as he entered. The road approaches. The road approaches. What a crazy production. Every hut that lay in the proposed road path was leveled. Our church... Our school, my hut, all went down in a matter of hours. I guess it's not that much better. Sweet Corrine died from fever and grief. Oh, my goodness. Just pray for us, Seely. Ah! I'm calling you for an hour. Now get my shave and don't keep me waiting. Our only joy in escapism comes from reading these letters, man. I didn't come out here for you to take all day to shave me in. And get the molasses out your ass. Oh my god, just cut his throat. That's crazy. So is it like, like reading the letters, living through the stories of her sister will be her final push to her truly standing up for herself and getting her freedom? Get on out here and do me right now. Get on out here. All right. 
Put your head back. <laughs> my neck itching like the inside of a horse's ass. Say that! Say that! <laughs> How did she know? She never stopped her. Now comes the time for me to tell you. It's time for us to go. Mm. You're such good people. That's the truth. Good people, huh? Celia is coming with us. Fuck yeah. Over my dead body. You satisfied? That's what you want? Yeah. Now what wrong with you? You a low down dirty dog. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, shit. Is this really happening? <laughs> you took my sister Nettie away from me. You knew she was the only somebody in the world who loved me. Hell yeah. With Nettie and my kids, they coming home soon. And when we all get together, we gonna sit around and whoop your ass. <laughs> Y'all was rotten kids. Made my life here hell. Of course, your daddy ain't nothing but some dead horse shit. <laughs> Shut up! How you doing, bad luck for a woman in the life of the man? I expect this to go this way. Sat in that jail down nearby, done rot to death. I want to thank you, Miss Seeley, for everything you've done for me. I was feeling real down. I was feeling mighty bad. And when I see you, I know tears are God. God damn. Not getting one penny of my money. Did I ever ask you for anything? I never asked you for nothing, not even your sorry ass hand in marriage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm going with Shiv. You going where? Too much racket going on around in this house. Pass me them peas. <laughs> oh, God. This is so good. All you fit to do is be Shug's maid. And you ain't even that good of a cook anyway. <laughs> ain't nobody crazy enough to marry you. Such a prick. Any more letters come? Could be. Sealy, no! I can't lose you. <gasps> come on, Miss Sealy. Let's go to the car. You're poor, you're ugly, you're a woman, you're nothing at all. Did you do right by me? Everything you even think about gonna fail. Goddamn right. It's been a pleasure meeting all of you. <laughs> Jail you plan for me is the one you're gonna rot in. Knock you up on Whoa. Everything you've done to me, already done to you. All she had to do was raise her hand up against him. I'm poor. I may even be ugly. But dear God, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> God damn it. She gets to see her sister and her children. All oh, the shadows. Watching. Wow, some time has passed. <laughs> how withered the house. Not even the mailbox can be kept together. Can't even shave. Come on, Paul. It's time to go now. Have to go home. Come on. It's time to go now. Time to go. When is he gonna roll over and die? It sure is nice. See you too. 
together again. Okay. Is he having a character arc here? Or is he just really drunk? My mama married this dead man two years after my real daddy dead. You his wife? How'd he die? On top of me. Oh. It's all yours now. Your real daddy owned this land. And he left it to your mama. And when your mama died, it passed on to you and your sister, Nettie. That's all very much explained. What? I think it pisses God off if you walk by the color purple in a field and you don't notice it. Okay. It just want to be loved, like it's saying in the Bible. Everything want to be loved. Interesting. That's why it's the color purple. It's the theme. You've been up my breath. Oh, sister. With you up a So, sister. What a cool spot. Yeah. Speak, Lord. Speak to me. I was so blind. Fascinating. Until you spoke to me. Oh, everyone congregating. That's pretty cool. How fun. Come on. Make amends for Christ's sake. See, Daddy, sinners have soul too. She coming home. Is he about to do the right thing? You expecting anybody? No. Probably just some people lost their way. That's right. The, the immigration stuff in Africa. Damn. Daddy! <laughs> it's the same actress. This looks like the same teenage actress. And they're running through the, the purple. She's doused in purple. He says, this is the day of his dream. Mama. This is Olivia. Mama. Mama. <laughs> As a wife, Tashi, Tashi, come, Tashi. I married Tashi. <laughs> yeah, you did right by her. Oh, Mikey 
Tata. That's right, it used to go by Larry Fishburn. Alrighty, well, I could talk for like nine minutes because apparently a trailer just came out uh, or like an hour ago while I was filming this and um, it's one of the big ones. So I got to hop on it. I might be able to match it whenever this video gets released with that trailer with the way I'm looking right now. I thought this was a really moving film. Very, very moving. I'm not familiar with the time um, that this took place in, but I thought it was, for the most part, a smart film. I thought, it, for the most part, it was poignant, uh, very touching. I mean, look, first thing I got to talk about, like, the performances. All right, Whoopi Goldberg was phenomenal in this movie. Phenomenal. And it's pretty crazy. I think what it, one of the testaments to how strong the performances are in this film is, like, I'm so familiar with the Oprah Winfrey personality. I'm so familiar with the Whoopi Goldberg personality. They, like, she's become like a, a host, you know, and, and viewed as like a comedian, Whoopi Goldberg. And then you have Oprah, who's freaking Oprah. <laughs> she's Oprah Winfrey. And all I saw the whole time when watching this were these two characters, Whoopi Goldberg's transformation from this abused, timid victim who evolves into someone of true strength, finding the strength within herself and watching this evolution over time. Like, I really believe this time span that they did. Oprah Winfrey's Sophia is just this, like, like the, the phrase that comes to mind for me is she is like a force of nature. I thought she was so strong, so powerful. And then you know, you have someone like uh, Danny Glover, who's, I've seen him in other works, obviously, outside of the Lethal Weapon movies. I've made a comment about it. You know, Predator 2, <laughs> Villain and Witness. He's done a bunch of films. I haven't quite seen him do a role like this, though. Uh, this guy was evil and cruel. Early on in it, I did say, like, he kind of reminds me of, like, a, a boyish bully. Like, someone who's, like, a boy in a man's body. And then to see that that is exactly who his character was by the time you meet the dad, he is... He is this person who is taking out a lot of his own traumas. Like, there's a, a lot about uh, the commentary on, you know, not just, like, the, the the systematic racism that is within the the world that they grow up in, but a lot of these uh, traits of upbringing, especially the toxic traits of upbringing, especially within the men, that I wasn't expecting to be explored. I didn't know what to expect. My only preconceived notion was that I, I heard it was, like, a, a, a touching picture, and it was Steven Spielberg. Just thought it was interesting. A white guy directing it. Hmm. I wonder if nowadays you can get away with that. It doesn't matter. It's Steven Spielberg. He's a phenomenal director. I guess the thing that kind of threw me for a loop that it took me a bit of adjusting towards was a bit of like the Hollywood gloss sheen that's sort of placed over it. I kind of just assumed because it's Spielberg and then knowing that this might be a bit of a like rough experience based on the kind of commentary and subject matter that I heard hints about that it would feel a little bit more like like a raw gut punch reel and while there were a lot of scenes that really deliver that especially especially because due to the very very strong acting uh there there were aspects of its filmmaking that I you could feel a bit of that PG-13 touch uh, versus going for like that hard R rating that uh, uh, that this would have done, but I have to transport myself to the time in which this movie was made, which on IMDb it says uh, 1985. So if this is coming out in 1985, I know this is like a, a film that's considered a classic, so I can imagine that in '85 this this is a little bit stronger, a little more brutal. Like nowadays, I think if you were to do I mean, other than the, the version we're getting, if, we're, if we were to do like this story today, <laughs> executed, not the Broadway musical version that I, I think that's what the, the new movie is going to be an adaptation of, but to just do something that's based on the book, I feel like nowadays in the two, 2020s, you would want it to be uh, something that feels a lot more raw. Not to say this movie does not have that gravitas of realism laced throughout it. Uh, it there was... So we're in that cross between because I find I just saw Gone with the Wind for the first time. It's not nothing like Gone with the Wind, uh, but it is still kind of captured in that that area that era with capturing that like that wonder because that's the the odd part to me the dichotomy of capturing this subject matter 
yet um it still feels like it was made with a sense of love i still feel like there was so much care and a passion to the filmmaking behind it that even though at times the the tone and overall execution didn't click for me specifically in the first third of the movie as the movie started to really progress in the last two thirds you know really it was around the time when Suge Avery came into the picture uh oh Margaret a- Avery is the is the actress her, her last name is also Avery Margaret Avery also phenomenal absolutely phenomenal I thought there were some unique kind of relationships that I haven't quite seen done in any movies especially the ones that they draw between uh Seely and Suge that I thought was very powerful as well. I think there's a lot of great, powerful moments in here. And even for like the character of Albert to have an unexpected arc, I thought they were just going to end it off on him being like full on villainous and to, for him to even have a realization, which is, you know, part of it is seeing who these people really are underneath the surface and letting that part of their soul shine through and then even instilling a bit of like that joyous hope and optimism at the very end i did find uh quite fitting actually so yeah i I could see why this movie has been able to this not just this movie but this story has been able to overall stand the test of time there's a a lot of resonating themes in here i think to this day i mean it's from 85 i thought it was a 90s movie the cinematography is still very much excellent the production values are rock solid. Uh, I, I loved the way all this was overall like captured, uh, even at times if the tone overall didn't quite click for me. But then at times it did work. I was surprised by how they had these humorous angles in here. At times it would feel like it was sometimes undercutting some of the tension or the or, or the, the rawness of it where I could imagine, especially in like 85, like, oh, this is kind of uh, a brave story to be told and, and it feels very authentic. I guess watching it through today's lens, at times it would sort of feel like it, it might undercut a moment or two. But then at the same time, you know, for a movie that does have all these things that are like emotionally and physically abusive in life, even sometimes in the harshest of times, there is still a, a sense of humor to be captured. Overall, actually, I'm like, you know what? Having some of that humor, because at times it did really make me laugh, and a lot of times the humor did just shine through with the characters, it still worked for me. I could hear someone at the door and they're just gonna have to wait that someone being john i would need to process it a tad bit more there's so many things about it that do feel personal and there's a lot of things about like dealing with like cultural grievance as well at times uh the melodramaticness some of the things that could feel a little bit more sappy or self-indulgent when it could have gone a little bit more subtle because yeah it's two and a half hours long and i didn't actually feel the runtime when i was watching it and obviously there were some moments that definitely brought me to tears uh i think there's a lot of great i I don't know if i quantify this movie for me personally as this is a great film from beginning to end but there's so many like just great powerful scenes that are laced throughout there's some just so many strong things and i i would i guess i did kind of crave it to be a little bit more a little bit more uh, feeling in the raw, real thing, but I, I also blame myself for thinking that because I that was the one thing I expected uh, from it, just knowing that it was like Spielberg and some of the other films that he's done. But then I'm like, oh, but uh, this might have been one of the, from knowing the films that Spielberg was working on at that time in like 1985, this might have been his first venture into making a movie like this like after E.T. and Indiana Jones, you know? This is like his first attempt before like 94 when he got to around to like Schindler's List and, and you know, and then doing like the Saving Private Ryan, things that did go a lot more for that raw gut punch. Uh, but for the most part, I think the the effort and the performances all around, like I think just for the performances alone, it, it's, it's worth watching. There's still a lot of strong stories with some gut-wrenching scenes, but overall a story that has a lot of, beautiful angles to it and, and a survival tale as well like there's there's so many things that they're dealing with uh all in once and i think it's a it's a, for the most part a fluid character exploration parts of the execution feel dated but the movie still feels timeless if that makes sense so yeah overall i still think the directing was really good not just capturing the time i forget what city they live in but not just capturing the societal time of that but also implementing 
uh, the the African culture weaved in throughout. Just this journey of of, of Whoopi Goldberg, uh, Seely growing growing into this human being over time left me overall with an emotional impact overall i left very satisfied uh and man those performances are, are so freaking strong i was surprised by that i was i was so surprised by like wow this this really holds up and also another thing i give it to for for a movie of this length I, I do think the editing is actually really really strong as well like you you have to really calculate how you're going to do this so that way it doesn't feel like it's dragging or meandering and I actually think that they did an excellent job at pacing this movie. So while at times a little bit too much of a gloss, or while at times a little too self-indulgent and sappy, uh, uh, for the most part, though, I never faulted the actors for that. It was more so some of more of the Hollywood-isms behind it. The performances, the direction, the, the storytelling, there are a lot of brave qualities to what they decided to do with this giant bag of a lot of different themes they are uh, unpacking all at once. But overall, I did leave very much satisfied and was still very much impressed by a lot that happened in this film. So I'm glad I finally watched it. But guys, what do you think about the color purple? Do you love it? Is it one of your faves? I'd still put it in that category of, of those kind of... There, it does have that feeling of like the forest. That's why I said Zemeckis, like Forrest Gump or like... And it's not Zemeckis or Spielberg, but like Shawshank Redemption around there. But if I think if it this was willing to be R-rated, it could have been just that much better for me. But yeah, nice, nice sentimental time. All righty. Well, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I will catch you all soon. Mm -hmm.